Professor Lucia Parlato is from University of Palermo. She works in European criminal and criminal procedure law. She supported us also at the Symposium on Violence and Discrimination Against Women in the Context of the Istanbul Convention, which we had on the 8th of March this year. You can reach the, the videos of the symposium on Professor Sozera's YouTube channel and find our paper title, Domestic Violence and the COVID-19 Pandemic. Today, she will give a lecture on victims of gender and domestic violence, legal aid and other procedural issues. The floor is yours, Professor. Mm -hmm. uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, um, I would like also to share my screen. Uh, I am trying to do that. Uh -huh. Okay, that's uh, good afternoon again. Uh, my name is Lucia Parlato. Um, I'm professor of criminal procedure in the University of Palermo in Italy. And uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Professor Sosa, uh, Dr. Erbas, Professor Bonini, and uh, Professor Oskan for giving me the opportunity to take part in this exciting event. Uh, it is a really a, a pleasure and a privilege for me to collaborate with uh, you on the topic of the Istanbul uh, Convention. Uh, today, I am going to, um, yes, <laughs> I'm going to speak about uh, uh, gender and domestic violence against uh, women uh, in the light of uh, the Istanbul uh, Convention. Um, I will mainly um, focus on criminal procedural issues uh, taken into account uh, the Italian law and uh, uh, the European legal uh, sources. Currently, um, many countries uh, are becoming particularly aware of the gravity of gender-based and domestic violence against uh, women. Both phenomena are especially insidious because they are so kaleidoscopic, so multifaceted. Uh, they have a special nature. Studying them is very challenging for the scholars, uh, but at the same time, understanding these contexts uh, is very important uh, also in order to fight them. My presentation today uh, can be summarized uh, as follows. Uh, the first point is uh, understanding definitions, gender violence and domestic violence uh, from now GV and DV. The second point is who is the victim? The third point is mm, about uh, two weak points, <laughs> complaint and evidence. Uh, fourth, uh, state's duty to grant legal aid and then uh, we can have our conclusions the first point is uh, understanding definitions uh, um, a good way to start my presentation uh, can be uh, the definitions given by uh, istanbul convention article uh, 3 uh, this article uh, contains uh, three extremely uh, important definitions uh, together, um, they provide us uh, um, something like an overall picture uh, of the phenomena we want to investigate. The first definition uh, in the Article 3 is the definition of violence against women. Uh, it is understood as a violation of human rights and the form of discrimination against uh, women and shall mean all acts of gender-based violence that result uh, in or are likely to result in uh, physical, sexual, psychological or economic harm or suffering to women. The second uh, definition is the definition of DV, domestic violence. Uh, domestic violence uh, shall mean uh, all acts uh, of uh, uh, physical, sexual, psychological, or economic violence that occur within the family or domestic unit or between former or current spouses or partners. As you can see, um, these are broad and overlapping def uh, definition and uh, broad and uh, uh, overlapping phenomena. Uh, they are very difficult to frame. Uh, Article 3 contains also uh, the definition of gender 
and of gender violence. Gender shall mean the uh, socially constructed roles, uh, behaviors, activities, and attributes uh, that a given society considers uh, appropriate for women and men. And uh, finally, uh, gender-based violence against women shall mean violence that is directed against uh, a woman because she is a woman. It is very interesting and uh, we can now um, uh, focus on other problems. Uh, GV and DV uh, have uh, uh, many shapes and uh, we have to ask ourselves uh, uh, what conducts can be labeled uh, as GV and DV. It is not about uh, only about beating and sexual abuse, but it is uh, about many other conducts. Uh, um, according to the uh, World uh, um, Health Organization, um, these conducts uh, can be perpetrated in a wide range of forms, sexual, psychological, economic, uh, stalking, and so on. Uh, as you can see, the, uh, uh, this definition, uh, uh, this list uh, fits with the definition given by Istanbul Convention. And it is very interesting uh, also to mention a decision of uh, the European Court of Human Rights uh, of uh, 2020, the Buturuga case. In the Buturuga case, uh, a man uh, abusively um, used uh, the social media accounts uh, of his ex-wife, uh, checked their contents uh, and acquired images and data without the human consent. The court recognized uh, the violation of Article 3 and uh, the, um, the violation of uh, a norm about uh, GV and DV. Uh, it is very important because the violation was here in a very uh, special uh, way. At the end of the day, we could affirm that this definition of GV and DV is a mobile uh, definition, uh, I think. And uh, mm, these are also transversal uh, phenomena. Uh, they can appear in all society strata. So our second point is uh, who is the victim? Uh, it's an the issues. Um, we are mainly speaking about violence against uh, women and crimes committed in the frame of a stable sentimental relationship, but there are many other uh, victims too, uh, other potential victims. Uh, first of all, children, uh, children, but also old people or people with disability and so on. But about children, uh, there are uh, some uh, particular uh, issues. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, these are about the children who witnessed uh, the, the crime. Um, it is not a, a theoretical uh, problem, uh, but also a practical one. Um, it is important to consider that uh, uh, even if children are not direct victims uh, of an assault or a form of violence, the very fact of being present during violence makes them victims too. In its preamble, the, uh, the Istanbul Convention recognized that uh, children can be victim of domestic violence, including as witnesses of violence in the family. So victims or not, uh, establishing if the children uh, are victims uh, as not a theoretical dimension, as I said, uh, but also a practical uh, impact, uh, in particular, if they are bounded uh, by a close family uh, relationship with the accused. Uh, in Italy, a specific norm, uh, Article 199, uh, plays uh, an interesting role. To fully understand this point, uh, uh, it could be useful to focus uh, uh, on this uh, rule. Uh, it is inspired by family feeling, uh, 
And according to this norm, the closer relative of the, of the accused has the possibility to refrain from testifying. But uh, this possibility is excluded when they are also victims of the crime committed by their relative. So if children are considered as victims, they are also fully considered as witness in the trial. It means that uh, they are bound to give evidence, notwithstanding their close family relation to the uh, accused. In Italy, the presence of a minor during the presentation, uh, uh, the perpetration of a crime results also um, in uh, the application of uh, an aggravating factor. But not only that, uh, since a long time, uh, the case law um, has been considering the minor who witnesses a crime um, as a direct victim. And the Italian legislator has recently said the same. And we are talking about a, a recent reform. It is a, um, a 2019 uh, reform called Codice Rosso, Red Code. On this subject, uh, it's also noteworthy that uh, if somebody died as a result of a crime, their close relatives are fully considered uh, as victims uh, too, whether or not they are minor and have witnessed uh, the crime. Another problem is, uh, are the victims of GV and DV uh, particularly vulnerable victims? I can say now in advance, yes. <laughs> the wide spectrum uh, of particular vulnerability uh, is determined by subjective uh, factors, uh, qualities of the victim, and objective ones, uh, type of the crime. Here we can recognize both factors. Uh, it uh, results uh, um, in uh, various uh, uh, number 17 and number uh, 38 of the directive uh, number 29 of 2012. Uh, and also uh, in article 22, uh, according uh, to uh, this article, um, the appraisal of the particular uh, vulnerability status requires an individual assessment. And in this assessment, uh, it's also um, personal characteristics of the victim and the relationship to and dependence on the offender and so on. So we uh, are uh, in a um, uh, very peculiar field, uh, the field of particularly uh, vulnerable victims. Um, then, uh, Italy is moving now uh, towards a more stable definition of victims. Uh, it is true, uh, it is uh, through an ongoing reform, the so-called Catabia reforms. Uh, it aims also to extend the protection uh, measures provided for by Codice Rosso, the mentioned the red code, to uh, other crimes and to attempt crimes. So let's move to um, the step number three. <laughs> and uh, we meet uh, two weak points. Two weak points are complaint and evidence. The first point here uh, in this part of my presentation is about complaint. The core of the issue is a complaint, but uh, to understand the problem, we must first uh, consider a structural feature uh, of the criminal procedure. Domestic criminal systems, including the Italian one, foresee two ways to start an investigation, um, prosecution ex officio, and prosecution upon requests of the victim. The first one, prosecution ex officio. Prosecution ex officio means that the public prosecutor uh, can start the criminal proceedings uh, by uh, his or her own uh, initiative. And in these cases, so the prosecutor can proceed also upon a report by a third person 
or when she uh, receives information about the crime in another way. It's uh, interesting to note uh, that the medical personnel assisting uh, the victim has the duty to report the crime to the police. Uh, the second way is the prosecution upon request of the victim. Uh, this way it means that the, that the prosecutor can only proceed um, if the victim lodges a complaint uh, in Italian uh, uh, querela. And if the victim doesn't lodge a complaint, the crime remains unpunished and the proceeding is, if opened, uh, closed. Many uh, GV and DV crimes uh, are prosecutable in this second way. For the same crimes, uh, the complaint, if lodged, cannot be withdrawn. Uh, or in few cases provided by law, uh, it can be withdrawn only in the presence of the ju judicial authorities. These um, first versions of complaint system are all for Zen in Italy for uh, uh, stalking cases. Uh, the purpose uh, is to protect a victim from intimidation. But this system, this uh, uh, upon request of the victim uh, system, um, has been set up to protect the intimacy of the victim. However, it is uh, like a double-edged sword because many GV and DV uh, crimes are not easily reported. Uh, the Istanbul Convention is crystal clear uh, in this regard, and it aims to bypass the victim's fear in reporting the crime. In the light of Article uh, 44 here mentioned, uh, parties shall take the necessary measure to ensure that their jurisdiction is not subordinated to the victim's complaint. In other words, the proceedings uh, must not be conditioned by the victim's complaint or its withdrawal. Uh, the prosecution ex officio, uh, ex article 44 IC, um, is a, a tool to protect the victim from themselves. This type of uh, crimes are therefore kept uh, at a higher um, severity level, it, it, it is clear. Um, but despite everything we said, the lack of a report hides the criminal facts uh, too often. They don't emerge at all. In fact, in many cases, the prosecutor do not initiate the criminal uh, proceedings, uh, although he could proceed ex officio, because he does not even have news about uh, the crime. Yes, uh, the cultural factor uh, plays a, a significant role. Many women uh, think uh, that saving their marriage or uh, their relationship is more important uh, than their safety and their happiness. Uh, because of these, uh, women remain silent or try to dismiss uh, uh, the church uh, after having lodged a complaint. But not only that, even uh, it is not the case, it may happen that these crimes are not uh, reported due to um, a sort of shame uh, on the part of the victims. They may fear that disclosing uh, the facts will compromise their social reputation. So we need new methods to increase, to encourage reports, new places uh, or institutions to host victims in extreme cases. Uh, we, uh, yes, we need to improve uh, uh, the, uh, <laughs> the compliance, uh, the reporting, and uh, how can we uh, obtain uh, this goal? Uh, through encrypted methods of reporting, of course, but not only that. Uh, in order to increase crime reporting, we need also a set of dispositions that encourage victims. Victims, uh, the reporting victim, uh, 
uh, victims have the right to know in advance that uh, um, uh, they um, would be properly informed and protected. Victim information is a crucial point in the directive number 29 uh, of 2012, and after that also in Italian uh, criminal procedure code. The victim has the right to be informed on their rights, on the ongoing proceedings, and also on the liberty status of the accused. The last point is lively discussed and uh, uh, a decision of the United Sections of the Supreme Court in Italy is awaited. Victim protection uh, is also provided by the directive and uh, in the Italian system uh, it has been ensured uh, for many years uh, through uh, ad hoc uh, precautionary measures removal from the family home and prohibition uh, of approaching the places frequented by the victim. Information or um, any change uh, to the accused freedom uh, is at the heart of the mentioned uh, jurisprudential uh, issue. And in order to encourage victim uh, to uh, report the crime, um, I think that it is important to mention a recent decision of the ECTHR. It is the decision uh, uh, versus uh, United Kingdom uh, about uh, uh, the crime of human being trafficking. Um, the court suggested the state to adopt a non lieu system in favor of victims of serious crimes who committed minor crimes in connection with their victim condition. Uh, the threat of a complaint against them may force them to not report a uh, more serious fact uh, that they suffered. I think that it is also interesting. Um, the need uh, to improve uh, the reporting of GV and DV, uh, of course, uh, was even clearer during the COVID emergency time. And uh, it is a, a broad topic and I go um, only um, stressing some points. Mm, in this time, there was a decrease in report, but at the same time, there was also uh, an increase of GV and DV cases. Uh, what can I think about it? It is a contradiction now. Perhaps uh, there are some double effect factors uh, and the same factors uh, works for the decreasing of reports and the increasing of the uh, violence cases. Uh, these factors are, uh, for instance, uh, close contact between uh, victim and abuser and uh, the increase of stress also uh, the um, uh, reduction uh, in the victim's contacts with uh, outsiders and so on. Uh, the other um, uh, step in this uh, uh, issue uh, is uh, um, the step on uh, evidence. Yes, um, we can uh, speak about uh, the evidence in these cases, uh, uh, and we have to stress that uh, the investigation on these uh, crimes usually focuses mainly on two types of evidence, victims hearing and um, scientific evidence, in particular DNA analysis. Um, victims hearing is affected by the same issues we have just seen for the compliant. Uh, even if the complaint is not withdrawable, uh, the problem may emerge later, uh, may emerge again at the time of giving evidence. Uh, the victim might try to describe the facts in a different way uh, and uh, in a different light and minimize the cruelty of the conduct. For this reason, two problems often occur in domestic violence criminal proceeding. Uh, a delay in reporting the crime fact and an unclear declarative progression. In this regard, the Italian Supreme Court uh, in 2020 
clarified thus that these issues cannot by themselves undermine the reliability of the victim as witness. On the other side, a central role is played by uh, scientific evidence and in particular by DNA analysis. Uh, in this frame, um, it's very important to mention a decision of ECTHR of 2020. This decision uh, concerned the protection of life and psycho uh, integrity. Uh, the victim was a victim of uh, uh, rape. Uh, in this case, the court affirmed that DNA evidence is particularly solid and promising, and it justified the need for further uh, investigation. And uh, uh, yes, uh, here uh, the core of the decision is the right of uh, the victim to uh, completeness investigations. Uh, DNA evidence offered good investigative uh, uh, insights, but prosecutor and police didn't follow this investigation trail. Let's move to uh, the other point. The point four is uh, the last point before my conclusions. Um, the state's duty to grant legal, legal aid, Article 57. Uh, the last part of my presentation uh, um, will be consecrated to uh, this article which focuses on legal aid. Uh, in the case of gender violence and domestic violence, the states uh, shall provide uh, for uh, the right to legal assistance and to free legal aid for uh, victims. In the light of these norms, uh, I'm going to briefly address two central questions. The first one is why does legal aid play a very significant role in the frame of GV and DV? The second question is, what is the relationship between Article 57 uh, on one side and the case law of ECTHR on the other side? The first question. Article uh, 57 uh, IC pertains to the sphere of um, the victim procedural protection, but um, it really involves also other perspectives in the frame of the so-called uh, four pillars of the Istanbul Convention, namely prevention, protection, prosecution, coordinated policy. In fact, technical defense uh, uh, often represents something like a precondition of each of the four indicated pillars. Why? In the period immediately following the violence, uh, uh, many victims of gender and domestic violence are forced to leave their home and belongings or their job without prior warning. This results in victims being devoid of financial resources. At the same time, judicial and administrative procedures are often very, uh, very complex and victims need, need, need legal aid in order to successfully uh, claim their rights. However, not all victims are able to bear the high costs involved in the use of justice. In many states, including Italy, it is not mandatory for the victim uh, to have a defensor. But without them, uh, the victim has very few chances to prove their case. For this reason, the European Council has seen fit to impose on the states uh, the duty to provide the right uh, to legal assistance and to free legal aid to victims in conformity with uh, domestic law. It is important to stress that uh, Article 57 doesn't automatically grant uh, uh, victims uh, the right to free legal aid. The parties are entitled to establish the criteria to obtain the above mentioned assistance. Um, in this perspective, uh, victims' protection has um, to be twofold. Victims might have a both, a, both a passive role, a weak role, or also an active and strong one. On one side, the offended may need assistance, information and support. Uh, uh, on the other side, they may want to take an active part in proceeding. Both per perspectives fall under Article 
57 and involves the topic of legal aid. The second question is, uh, what is the relationship between uh, Article 57 and uh, the um, ECTHR case law? It is possible to see an evolution in favor of victims' rights uh, to uh, legal aid, also in the frame of the uh, ECTHR. Uh, the Court of Strasbourg has gradually uh, recognized the importance of the victim's role in criminal proceeding. The involved conventional norms are Articles 2, 3, uh, 4 and 8. In particular, it is significant uh, that the, the Court invoked Article 8 to, stray, to stress the need of an effective protection of domestic relationship and also invoked Article 3 uh, for uh, in cases of sexual uh, abuse. Um, besides uh, um, the self-evident uh, negative duty of the state uh, to uh, abstain from behaviors that violate uh, these uh, fundamental rights, the state has uh, several positive duties, both in the substantial sphere and in, pr in the procedural one. Uh, as far as the procedural sphere is concerned, uh, it is mandatory to ensure uh, the actual identification and punishment of the perpetrators. State authorities have the duty to conduct complete and effective investigations. In this frame, the, the state must guarantee uh, the right of victims to participate to criminal procedure, to be heard and to introduce evidence. But at the same time, victims need to be protected from the risk of secondary vict victimization. The latter, um, could result from the participation uh, of the church to the trial or also from the dynamics uh, of the proceeding itself. Um, there is an interesting case law list that I can propose here. And going back in time, uh, the first case is a very uh, new case, the Petrella case. Uh, here, uh, the, uh, the court affirmed that uh, the victims have the right to a trial of a reasonable length and also the right to compensation if the length of the trial uh, is considered unreasonable. Uh, it is a, an important acknowledgement of the rights uh, of the victim. So going back um, in time, uh, the Tershana case is very interesting. In this case, the victim suffered grievous injuries in an acid attack by an uh, unidentified assailant uh, uh, by suspected former husband while she was walking uh, along uh, back street in Tirana. The European Court uh, recognized the authorities' failure to conduct a prompt and effective investigation into identification, prosecution, and punishment of the silent. Uh, the authorities has failed to protect the woman's life and her right to private life under Article 2 and Article 8 of the Convention. Uh, Volodina versus Russia is a decision of uh, 2019. It is very important to quote it. Whenever there are any doubt about the occurrence of domestic violence or violence against women, uh, end quote, special diligence is required in the conduct of the proceedings. Uh, the other decision is a decision versus Italy, uh, Talpis versus Italy, and uh, um, I find a very uh, significant uh, um, a point in which the court affirms that the passage of time can compromise the investigation and prevent its successfulness because of the loss uh, of evidence. Uh, in particular, uh, the court affirmed that uh, in a case of gender violence. So we can move to conclusions. Um, the conclusion, um, I would like to stress uh, uh, some points on uh, the Italian situation. 
following the convention, the Italian legislator approved the law uh, number 77 of 2013, uh, introducing in the CPC in this position on vulnerable witnesses protection and on victims' rights in the frame of no lieu procedure. Among other uh, innovation, uh, the legislator modified uh, the uh, legal aid law and uh, they provided the victim of some gender sexual domestic uh, gender violence with technical defense paid by the state. More recently, um, it's not worthy, uh, the law number is six, uh, the, the number, nine, uh, number uh, 69. Uh, of 2019, the so-called Codice Rosso. Uh, this law introduced new norm in the criminal code and then in criminal procedure code regarding gender and domestic violence. Uh, among this innovation, uh, one is uh, uh, perhaps uh, the more important, uh, the victim of these crimes must be heard within three days after the investigation beginning. And now the ongoing Cartabia reform, uh, I mentioned uh, uh, this uh, uh, ongoing reform, um, aims to extend uh, these measures to other serious crimes and to attempted crimes. In conclusion, the Italian legislator provided a set of measures to protect the victim, but we have to stress also that uh, some judges still question uh, the uh, reasonableness of the legal aid in favor of victims. The following episode is a uh, emblematic of this trend. An Italian judge uh, has recently challenged the norm which provides legal aid in favor of victims of gender and domestic uh, crimes. Uh, uh, and this norm uh, provided for uh, legal aid irrespective of uh, the economic situation of the victims and without any judicial assessment. According to this judge, the alleged uh, defect concerned the incompatibility uh, of the law with the principle of equality and with the right of defense. The Constitutional Court was called to decide on uh, this matter through the decision number one of 2021. The court clearly reaffirmed the constitutionality of legal aid. The latter, uh, as the court affirmed, is the result of the legislator's unquestionable choice uh, and to support particularly vulnerable victims and to encourage them to report crimes. For these reasons, legal aid has to be granted to all victims of above mentioned crimes, regardless of their financial means. But uh, mm, did we really need this confirm? We can ask. <laughs> Uh, a lot has been done, but uh, there is still a lot to do, especially on a general and cultural level, to assure that the victim can have an active and effective role in criminal proceeding. This is also uh, demonstrated uh, by a recent decision of the ECTHR, uh, in which the court condemned Italy for the word, for the words used by a judge about a victim of gender-based uh, crimes acquitting the accused in the second instance. So to conclude, you can say that uh, uh, there are two key words uh, uh, for the uh, participation of the victim uh, in criminal proceeding. The first one is time, uh, not accelerated or delayed, but the whole the whole managed according to the victim vulnerability. But more and more, the second keyword uh, is important and it is a recognition, appreciation. Um, the victim uh, need to be encouraged to report the crime and to cooperate during the um, criminal proceeding. 
So I would like to conclude quoting a, a sentence. Um, it is a sentence of a film of Nanni Moretti, Palombella Rossa. Uh, I translated uh, here uh, the sentence, uh, we need to find the right words. Words are important. Yes. And uh, it is, uh, in particular, very important for the victims uh, uh, who participate uh, uh, to uh, criminal proceeding. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you for this remarkable presentation. And now we have a question and answer part. Uh, the questions will come from the chat section and we will uh, read it loud to be recorded. Uh, now we have one question. Uh, I can read it loud. Uh, it comes from Teresa Bender Sabalkamp. Uh, I'm sorry if I misread your name. Since women and men are included in the Istanbul Convention, what about transsexual women? Is there some reference in the Istanbul Convention or in articles about the Istanbul Convention? Yes. Uh, it is a, a really um, a good question, and thank you uh, for giving me the opportunity uh, to focus on this other uh, problem. Uh, the, the Istanbul Convention uh, do not uh, um, take in account directly this point, but uh, we can recognize uh, uh, the possibility to extend uh, the guarantee uh, through uh, the definition of gender. So um, the Istanbul Convention aims uh, to cover uh, the weak persons uh, and of uh, violence and uh, the victim of gender-based violence. So I can say that all these um, protective measures can be extended also to protect uh, um, the victim in this other, uh, this other context. And the same I have to say also uh, for the Italian situation, uh, because as I said, uh, the ongoing uh, uh, reform, uh, uh, so-called Cartabia, aims to extend uh, these measures uh, uh, also um, behind the class classic uh, um, uh, topics, gender violence and domestic violence. And uh, if uh, perhaps uh, it could be interesting also for the students. Uh, in Italy, there is also another ongoing reform. Uh, it is the so-called ZAN reform. And it is uh, on uh, these uh, gender-based uh, violence cases. And it aims to um, uh, recognize uh, uh, a high level to protection and to prosecution uh, to fight uh, this, uh, um, this shape of crimes. Yes, perhaps we can also fight them, fight these crimes uh, um, also with uh, um, existing uh, tools. But uh, I find that uh, it is more appropriate that the legislator uh, take in account also these uh, specific uh, needs. Uh, I hope that I answered to uh, the question. Ah, thank you. Danke schön, Teresa. Uh, es ist wirklich eine Freude für mich, uh, dass ich uh, diese Antwort geben kann. <laughs> Danke. Another question from Marvin Dumas. Yes. May you give some deep information about the campaign which started about the words such as putana and hagna in Italy? How the red coat refreshes on this? Thanks in advance, she says. Yes, um, for these words, uh, there are uh, some uh, um, criminal uh, features. 
uh, criminal norms, uh, which works uh, against uh, these uh, conducts. Uh, naturally, uh, it, it uh, plays a relevant role uh, in the relationship between uh, a man and a woman or between two persons, but it plays also um, a role in uh, uh, cyber crimes because these words are uh, used uh, very often also um, in this context uh, in the online uh, uh, relationships and on uh, the social so uh, in uh, Italian system, for instance, uh, there are traditional uh, uh, crimes, traditional crimes uh, features, uh, which interest uh, the, um, the, the single saying uh, these words to a woman. It is an injury and is uh, uh, foreseen for our, uh, by our uh, criminal code, but uh, since 2019 with the Codice Rosso, uh, there are also new uh, criminal features. Uh, um, they are specific for the using of these words or also of uh, um, uh, particular uh, images and so on, on uh, WhatsApp or on uh, social uh, accounts and uh, it is punished uh, very severely uh, uh, by this law, Codice Rosso of 2019. There is no more question for now. Maybe we can wait a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think that uh, there are um, many and many topics to discuss on uh, this, uh, uh, this theme uh, on uh, gender violence and domestic violence. And uh, this theme is uh, always in evolution uh, in law, but uh, also in our life. Uh, yes. So I think that for the student, uh, it could be very interesting uh, to consider uh, this, uh, uh, this phenomena. I would like to say, maybe using, I don't know. Ravenna Rima says uh, she's really thankful for the presentation and answers, but also she would like to say, maybe using this kind of words can evaluate as physical violence, psychological, maybe she wants to say. Yes. Um, yes, it is important to evaluate uh, not only the physical uh, sphere, but also all the psychological uh, sphere. Um, I think that in the law, uh, in, on the European field, but also on the domestic one uh, in Italy, uh, uh, the two fields are uh, considered, uh, are both considered. And... Uh, I can uh, uh, recognize uh, this phenomena uh, also in a recent uh, case law, in um, uh, European case law, and also in the Supreme Court in Italy uh, case law. Uh, for instance, also in uh, uh, European case law, is, it is a, a very important, the Buteruga case, I mentioned uh, uh, that case, and uh, um, uh, it, um, the, the conducts uh, do not involve uh, the physical uh, sphere, but uh, only the um, psychological one. And uh, the court recognized uh, the importance of the violation. And also in Italy, uh, there are some norms that uh, aim, uh, that, uh, aim uh, to um, uh, recognize the importance of the violence against the person. And the Supreme Court clarified that this violence uh, can work at the same time, uh, even 
if uh, it is only uh, psychological uh, violence. Mm, I think that uh, it is also significant. Yes. Thank you for the question. I think that's all. Thanks for the answers and your great presentation. Thank you again. <laughs> for your support. I uh, hope we can see you face to face in our other events. Yes, yes, I'm sure. <laughs> yes. And anyway, I, I can send you, uh, if uh, it is interesting for you, uh, my PPT, and perhaps uh, uh, it could be useful uh, for the students. <laughs> it would be great. Thank you again, Lily. <laughs>